Hi, in this video, I'll be going through if statements. These will just be very introductory, simple if statements in MATLAB. So to get started, I have a script file I've already created and I have inputs for my user. And then I also have outputs to display text to my user for different scenarios. So when I have different outcomes for different situations or different conditions, then I know I need an if statement somewhere within my code. To get started, let's run it without any if statements. Do you like coffee? No. How many cups of coffee do you drink a day? Zero. But you don't like but don't you like coffee? Enjoy. That doesn't make sense. This code doesn't work. Clearly, when I say no, I don't want all the information to be displayed. So let's just get started with an if statement there. So the first thing I want to do is see if my user even likes coffee. So if my user says yes, then I want to run everything else in my code. If I look through all these different outputs, this is the only thing that I want my user to see. This code is not for you, goodbye. So when they say no, they don't like coffee, the code's not for them. A little helpful hint, control A, control I, or command A, command I will automatically indent your code. So it looks formatted in a way that's a little bit easier to look at. All right, so let's try this again. Do you like coffee? No, this code is not for you, goodbye. Good, so we've addressed that first scenario, that first condition. So when the user says yes, it will start running the code. When they say no, it doesn't run through everything else. So let's try the yes version now. Yes, how many cups do you drink a day? Three, and then it says, but don't you like coffee? Enjoy, and the FDA suggests more than five, like doesn't suggest more than four or five cups. So that doesn't really necessarily make sense. Like maybe I want to see all that to the user, but maybe there's something else. Like maybe I want more conditions, and these are different scenarios. I'm saying different messages. So, but don't you like coffee? Maybe that's something more so. If someone tells me they like coffee and then they say they drink zero cups of coffee a day, then I might say, but don't you like coffee? So if cups is less than or equal to zero, hopefully they don't put negative, but this will help address if they do put a negative number, we'll catch it and then still say the same message. And I will say everything else, we can go to those two. So again, if I run my code again, it's always a good practice to run your code frequently, test it, test each change you're making. If you make too many changes before testing and you have problems, you don't know what the problems are related to. So yes, I like coffee. I drink zero cups a day, but don't you like coffee? Um, I would not actually say zero. I would probably say more like three. Enjoy, and then the FDA tells me not to drink more than four or five. Um, so I could say both of those, but my original intent was actually to have another scenario. Else, if. So I'll do an else here. So let's say if I'm already drinking less than or equal to zero, it's gonna go here. So for this second part of this if statement, these are only gonna be situations where the value is greater than zero. So I wanna say anything, if cups is less than four, then we'll just say enjoy. And if it's anything else more than four, then I wanna say the FDA doesn't suggest more than four or five cups a day. So let's try this code out again. Yes, four. And they're saying not more than four or five cups a day. So that seems reasonable. Let's say at four, I wanted to tell them to enjoy it. Then I would change this to less than or equal to four. I'm just gonna leave it to less than four. Also, you can add spaces here, not add spaces here. That's not gonna affect your code. That would just be a personal preference of formatting how you want your code to look. I typically like adding spaces throughout. All right, so again, I'm gonna use that control A, control I trick to have my code indented again. So we've ran through the code a few times. We're happy with how the code looks. Now I wanna go back and look at what we actually have. So this right here would be our example of our first if statement in our code. This if statement here is associated with this else and this end. 
all if statements must have an end. You don't have to have else or else if with your if statements, but you do have to have the initial if, which would be where you put your initial condition and end. When I look at my first if statement here, I'm using a string function. I just want you to understand that this results in either a true or false, so a one or a zero, which would be what I need for my if statement. I need some type of condition that's gonna result in true or false. So again, that if is associated with this else, meaning that if coffee is yes, it will run this code. In any other scenario, any other text, it will run this code. And then that's the end of that if statement. This second if statement here is an example of a nested if statement. So now I have an if statement nested inside of my first one. This if statement starts here. I have a condition using relational operators. And then I have a second condition with another relational operator. And then I have a third that's else. I could also say else if cups greater than or equal to four. This would be the same thing as putting else. I prefer to put else in this scenario just to make sure that I don't do something silly like forgetting the equal sign and then I'm actually losing the users that put four because I don't have any scenario related to if the user says four. Um, less room for error like that. But again, I could put it as else if, if I would choose. 